Well, hello and welcome to another fun uh, demo here for our online digital imaging class. Um, this week's unit, we're going to be talking about the paint tools as well as the gradient tools here in Photoshop. Um, so hopefully you've had fun up to this point and uh, you can sit back and relax and I think that you guys are going to enjoy this. This class is going to be, uh, in my opinion, getting a lot more fun as we get to dive into some of these more creative tools. Um, and so we're going to go step by step today and just kind of look at some of these kind of foundational tools for uh, manipulating our designs, um, for adding backgrounds, for um, manipulating photographs as well. So let's sit back, relax, and uh, learn a little bit about um, the paint and gradient tools here in Photoshop. So the first thing we need to look at is where these tools are located. So we'll go over to our toolbar and it's going to make a lot of sense. It looks like a paint bucket here with paint spilling out. Um, so we can click and hold down there and see the different options we have. So in this week, we're going to look at the gradient tool and the paint bucket tool. Um, two really important tools here in Photoshop. Um, it's important to note too that the, um, the keyboard quick command to get here is the letter G. And you can see that right there. So if we're on a, another tool here in Photoshop, if we hit the letter G, it'll jump right there. And then remember, again, I'll keep reminding you that if we hold shift and then hit the letter for that keyboard shortcut, it'll cycle through those different tools. So in this case, it's shift G, and that'll cycle us between the gradient, the paint bucket, and then the 3D material drop tool, which we're not taking a look at this week. Uh, so we're going to look at the gradient and the paint bucket tool. Um, first, let's look at the easier of the two, and that's going to be the paint bucket tool. Um, and to do this, um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new document. So um, file new, or you can see you can also go to command N. Um, both will do the same thing. And uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to go a little bigger this time. Uh, just why not? And so we've got a, our canvas here in Photoshop opened. And uh, let's talk about the, uh, the tool options here for the paint bucket tool. So you can see um, we've got our tool options bar up here. And the first thing to look at is this drop down here. And you can see that we've got foreground or pattern. And so we can apply with our paint bucket tool the foreground color that we have selected. In this case, that's white. Uh, so we'll want to change that since we're painting on a white background. Um, or we also have the option to paint in a pattern. And then when we select that, you can see we have a, a patterns drop down box here as well. And we've seen that uh, last. Uh, in the last unit when we looked at layer styles and we could apply um, some patterns within the layer styles through a pattern overlay. So that shouldn't be too unfamiliar. Uh, but let's look at the foreground colors first. And we can kind of take a look at what um, we can do with the paint bucket tool. Uh, because it's pretty simple, but there's some nuances to it too that I want us to take a look at. Um, so with the paint bucket tool selected, um, let's go ahead and change our foreground color. I'm going to go ahead and just select red. That's really easy. And uh, you might guess that if we just click on our canvas, it's going to fill it with red. It's as if you took a paint bucket, right, of red paint, and you just spilled it all over this canvas, and the whole canvas now is covered in red paint. But it gets more complicated than that as well. So let's take a look at some of the other features we can um, change here. So moving on from the foreground and pattern option, uh, we have the blending mode. Uh, this should be set to normal. We'll talk about blending modes later on. You're going to hear me say that just about every week until we get to blending modes. Uh, and they're going to do some pretty cool stuff when we get there. So we'll skip this for now. Um, but now we're looking at opacity. Uh, so we have the chance to change the opacity um, when applying the paint bucket tool, as well as the option of changing the opacity of the layer that we're applying the paint bucket tool over here. And this is going to become really important uh, for our assignment this week or for this unit. So you should really pay attention to this. Um, let's take a look at how this works. Um, and to do this best, I'm just going to simply grab the paintbrush tool. You don't need to do this. Just watch along here since we haven't talked about the, the paintbrush. We're going to get there real shortly. But I'm just going to draw out some really poorly designed or really poor blocks here. I'm going to draw four of them here. Okay, so we've got these these four containers here. Let's take a look. And so since my containers are red, um, I'm going to go jack, jump back to my paint bucket tool. But since my paint buckets are red, I'm going to go with a different color just so we can see the effect. Um, 
All right, so let's take a look. I'm gonna change my opacity here. I'm gonna change it down to, oh, I don't know, let's go 32%. Uh, that's about a third. Uh, so when I click here, we can see that this color, it's only applying it at a 32% opacity. And in this one, let's change it to go about 60%. And then click that, and we can see it's applied it a bit more. Now it's 60%. Now this third one, uh, let's go ahead and apply it at 100%. So you can see how the opacity here is actually working. So we can actually change the opacity of the tool itself, even though our layer here is at 100% opacity. Um, now let's take a look at what happens if we don't um, have a closed path or a closed box. Um, so all these shapes are completely closed. They're, they're, they're closed containers. So you can think of pouring a paint bucket into, in this case, another closed paint bucket. The paint's going to stay within that paint bucket. Now, if that paint bucket that we're pouring it into has a hole in it, what's going to happen? That paint's going to spill out everywhere else, right? Well, in the same way, that's going to happen here as well. So if we try and pour our paint into a bucket with a hole in it, it's going to just spill out over our entire canvas. And so it's going to be really important to pay attention to things like that uh, when you're painting here in Photoshop to make sure if you're trying to paint within shapes or closed shapes uh, that they are indeed closed and you don't have any of these holes. Because um, this would happen even if it was a really tiny hole, the paint will just spill all out and cover your entire canvas. Now, I want to start over here. So I'm going to create a new layer. I converted this background layer so I can just go ahead and delete it. Um, that's just going to be easiest. Now, this is really easy. We've got a transparent background. I want to set this to white again. So all I need to do is hit D on my keyboard, which, remember, resets the default for the foreground background colors. And since our paint bucket's set to paint with the foreground color, we need to swap it so we have white in the front. So D resets them, and then X swaps them. And so now we have white in the foreground. You can also just click here and then select white uh, if you want, but it's a lot easier and a lot quicker to just use the keyboard shortcut of D and then X, and then you have white uh, in the foreground. So I'm gonna go ahead and just paint. Now we've got a white background to work on again. All right, um, so that's how we can reset our canvas doing that. But actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open up uh, an image here so we can just kind of see how um, this tolerance works. So give me just a second to open up an image here. And I'll actually maybe use one from um, our actual assignment. So let's see here. Let me navigate over to that. And I'm just gonna grab this image here and I'll just bring it in. This will just help us demonstrate um, what tolerance does. So if you're deciding to paint within an actual photograph that has a continuous tone or a gradient uh, applied to it, we see this gradation in the sky here, um, and there's these various tones throughout the image. It's a photograph. Um, so the tolerance tells the paint bucket, because we don't have closed boxes like we had before uh, in my last demonstration. Uh, instead, we have the continuous tones. So the tolerance tells the paint bucket how far that paint should flow out into the different tones. So with a really high tolerance, um, it has a high tolerance for various tones. So if I click in the blue, for example, um, and I have a really high tolerance, it's going to spill that paint, whatever color I have, over a lot of the different shades of blue in the sky here. So let's try this. I'm going to pick um, red, since there's no red in this particular image, it'll make it easier, easier for us to see. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click. And we can see a lot of the sky now got covered in blue. Uh, now, it didn't affect the blue in the water or the blue up in this corner uh, because they're closed off. So um, it is still contained within closed boxes, um, but now it's telling it within a gradient, gradient um, how far it should spill. So let's take a look, and I just command Z to undo. Let's take a look if we lower that tolerance to say um, 20. Now there's a lot less tolerance for various tones in the particular area where we're trying to paint. So let's click, and we can see it no longer has the same tolerance to spill over to different areas. So uh, we can be a little bit more precise if we're trying to um, fill particular areas within, say, a photograph. Now this comes in handy, or it can come in handy, if you've got some old photographs and you're trying to 
recolor certain areas quickly. Now as we move on in this class we'll we'll see how we can colorize photos maybe a little bit more precisely than the paint bucket tool but there's certainly um, times when the paint bucket tool is going to let us uh, recolor certain areas of a photograph uh, quickly. Um, so keep in mind the tolerance again the tolerance a high tolerance means it has a high tolerance for multiple tones of a certain color so multiple shades and tints and um, a low tolerance means it has a low well, low tolerance, uh, and it'll select fewer of those particular tones. Um, so that's the uh, the paint bucket tool, and the paint bucket tool is well, it's pretty much just that. Everything we've looked at, it's it's not too complicated. Um, we can take a look. Let's take a look just just for the heck of it, for fun. Um, I'm gonna go back to my other example here, just because it's a nice blank canvas. And so with the pattern selected, we can see we can click, and it'll simply paint in that pattern just like you'd expect. Um, let's Command Z and remove that. We can experiment and just play with some of these different patterns. So uh, again, we can fill certain blocks, certain areas, uh, or if we wanted to, but I don't really know a practical application where we'd fill a sky or certain ton of a photograph with a pattern. Um, but you're more than welcome to, you certainly can. Uh, it can create some interesting effects to say the least. So anyways, that's the, the paint bucket tool um, here in Photoshop. And uh, I'm going to leave that open, actually. And so let's take a look at some um, of the other tools that we have um, available to us, specifically uh, for our demo today, the gradient tool. And I'm going to jump back over here to my, my blank screen. I'm going to Command Z to undo this, go back to our white blank canvas here. And so with the gradient tool selected, let's take a look at our options menu. You see we've got new tools here to work with, or new options to work with. And so... The gradient tool is pretty interesting. Um, it's going to do what you think. It's going to create uh, a gradient for us. But let's take a look at what that gradient actually uh, looks like and what we can do with it. So the first thing to note is this drop down here. And you can see we've got um, some gradients. And I've actually got more in here that you probably have. You probably just have these first set of color ones here. Those are kind of the default for Photoshop. Uh, but there are other ones that we can work with. So the first thing I want to show you is this little gear drop down. And you can see we've got a bunch of different um, options here to load different preset gradients um, into Photoshop. And so I'm actually going to go to Reset Gradients here and hit OK. And that's just going to give me these default ones here that you probably have access to as well. And just to show you what I mean, uh, we can go in here and these neutral density ones, if you're a photographer, you've probably heard this term neutral density, um, which simply means that it's gray and it'll block light, um, and at least in the photography terms it does. Uh, but here you can think of it as just a, a semi-transparent uh, gray um, in different various forms. So let's load those, because those are going to be helpful, and we'll append those to our current list. And you can see that uh, we have those now here. Um, and then you also might want to change this to large thumbnail, so you can get a better idea of what the gradients are. That's totally optional. But we can see these neutral density ones, and we've got some different options there for us. So let's take a look at some of these gradients here and these default ones first because they're pretty important. So this first one, if we click it, um, it actually is going to always use, this one will always change uh, because it's using whatever foreground and background colors you are currently using. So if I hit D on the keyboard and we go back to our default foreground and background colors, you can see that all uh, immediately Photoshop changed this uh, to fit our foreground background colors. And so we can go in here and modify and create a custom gradient by simply just picking different foreground and background colors. And so to demonstrate this, I'm going to pick a blue and I think a green. And we can drag this out. So let's take a look. There we go. We've got this nice gradient between our blue and a green. Um, and we can just keep dragging this away and playing with this uh, all day long. Um, and so I'm actually, let's turn this off. I'm going to create a new layer that we can play with. And so let's take a look. We'll come back to this in just a second, but now let's take a look at these tools here. Um, so we've got the uh, linear gradient tool. We've got the radial gradient tool, the angle gradient tool, the reflected gradient tool, and finally the diamond gradient. And they're pretty self-explanatory, but let's just take a look real quick. So linear is what it is by default and it creates a look like this. 
the radial, you can see as we click and drag, uh, will create a look like this, this circle kind of gradient. Uh, the angle one is really interesting, um, and it creates this kind of angle. It's got a straight line with the two colors you've selected, and then kind of blends them around this angle, whatever angle you draw out. And then the reflected one is like linear, but it simply reflects it um, along the line. There you go. You can see um, we've got the blue to green, but it's reflected on both sides. And then finally, the diamond one is like the radial, but just a different shape. Um, so you can create um, a look like that as well. That's pretty self-explanatory. Again, we have uh, the modes here. And uh, we're not going to touch the, the blending modes today. Um, but now we have opacity that we can deal with. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to create a new layer again. And we'll change the opacity of this. So um, let's actually go, let me go to linear. And let's create a just let's create a gradient with linear. All right, so we've got our gradient here, uh, but now let's change maybe the diamond and lower the opacity to I don't know 30%. And now when we draw this out, we can see it's applied it, but it's applying it with a very low opacity, one on top of the other. Uh, because it's a low opacity and it's transparent, we're able to see our first one, second, third uh, one as well, which are all located underneath of it. And we can continue to drag this out. And it'll keep um, adding layers of this uh, to our design, I guess you could call this. It's not a very good design, but you can see anyways um, what the opacity is doing. So again, the opacity here in the tool options bar is going to be pretty helpful for us because it isolates the opacity of the tool from the opacity of the layer. Um, now, if you know that you're only going to put the gra this gradient on the layer and do nothing else to it, it might be easier to leave this at 100% and then change the opacity over here in the layer, which is going to allow you a little bit more flexibility and control uh, later on. But if you're going to be stacking things on one particular layer, uh, like we'll be doing uh, today in one of our exercises, uh, you're going to want to pay attention, like I said before, to the opacity in the tool options bar versus the opacity, or maybe I should say in addition to the opacity in the layers menu as well. All right, so now that we've looked at some of the tools uh, here in the options bar, we can go ahead and take a look at uh, changing some of these gradients. So let's take a look. I'm actually going to just change my opacity here back up just so that this shows up better here for us. Um, all right, so let's take a look. So we've got this one, which is our foreground background color. And then we've got this one, which is our foreground to transparent. So if we click on that one and we drag this out, uh, linear is going to be better. I'm going to turn this off actually and create a new layer again go to linear and so we can see as we drag this out it's going to take us from our foreground color down to transparent showing whatever's underneath this is really great uh, especially with those neutral density filters for applying vignettes to images or coloring a sky or creating fades in a photograph all of which you'll be doing today um, and so this this option right here is really helpful uh, to do that um, so you can see that these ones are set by your foreground background colors, and the rest of these uh, ones are preset colored ones that you can go in here. So we've got this rainbow one, right? We can click on that, and it creates a rainbow. Uh, that's great. And uh, we can uh, change those up. So let's take a look, though, at uh, modifying these. We already looked at clicking on this drop down here and seeing how we can load different ones. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK here. So you can see these different photographic toning options here. And now I'm going to go back to reset. It's going to give me back that original list. So with this, let's take a look. I'm going to click on this first one here. And so by selecting a gradient in the gradient dropdown and then clicking on this tool here, not on the dropdown, but on the color itself, it's going to bring up this gradient editor. And we're, now we can go ahead and actually edit a particular gradient however we'd like. Um, so if we click down here on any of these, you can see the color that's associated with it. I can click on that and then come down here and you see we have foreground, background, so we can change it around to whatever our foreground background is. Uh, or you can see we can go to user color um, and I can click here and then when I click in that box it brings up this color picker and I can go in and I have free range to pick any color that I like. Um, we can also go in here and 
click and add a, another color. Let's do that. I'm going to add a blue because we're not using that yet. And you can see that we can change this around, drag out where the fade points are. Um, here we can drag where the fade is. And so you can really kind of customize. I can add more colors if I wanted to. Um, it can be pretty helpful. Now if we come up here and click on these, these are going to adjust the opacity. So this is where I can change the transparency of the gradient as well. So here you can see that um, I'm creating uh, a really low opacity on this side. So it's going to go from full opacity to a really low opacity on the side. And again, we can click and add more variations in opacity at the top as well. Uh, so that's really helpful. Um, when we're done with this, we can come in here and name this if we want. Um, I'm going to call this Tom's because why not? And I'll go ahead and hit new. And you can see when I hit new, it's going to save this to my presets here. And I can go ahead and hit OK. And then when I go here, it's always going to be saved here. So I can go here and I can apply this. And then I can go back up here later if I want to and access my custom one that I made um, and apply that later. So we can go in here, simply just click. And it's going to allow us to go to any of these and start modifying them. Um, and you can get really crazy in here and do all sorts of fun different things, uh, creating your own gradient. <coughs> okay, so with that done, um, that's really a, a pretty good look at the gradient tool, but you don't have necessarily a lot of context for maybe how would you use the gradient tool. And so I've given you some examples, I've demonstrated a few things, um, but let's just take a look at one more example here. I've got this image up here, so let's just take a look while it's up, um, and I'll show you what I mean. And so let's go, let's reset our default colors and swap them to white this time. So now we have a gradient of white to black or just white to transparent. I'm going to take white to transparent. And so this comes in really handy when you're um, going in and you're going to be um, designing or creating a layout for an ad or something like that. You might have a photograph you want to use, but you want to create some white space for some text. And so I can go in here with my gradient and drag this up and start to create a fade where I now have place to place some text. Um, I'm going to Command Z that. And I also just wanted to show you as well, as you're dragging up the gradient, you can also hold Shift just like the shape tool, and it's going to lock into specific locations. So it's going to lock into straight up and down, or straight sideways, or at 45 degree angles, um, which just helps you get a nice straight gradient. So if I hold shift, I'm going to get a perfectly straight up and down gradient. Um, and that looks pretty good there. But if I put this on a new layer, and I drag this actually maybe bigger than I want, it gives me some flexibility, because now I can go to the move tool, and I can move this uh, around up and down to adjust where that line is where it fades so again it's just one more level of flexibility that we can do in Photoshop if we're applying things to a new layer um, so this is one technique uh, that you might use uh, in a design process you might apply a white transparency like this to create a, a place where you can now place text or um, other logos or other things that you might need within your design um, so that's really helpful there um, another option we have, and let's take a look here, uh, and that's going to be to, we'll create a new layer. That's going to be, let's go back to the gradient tool. And now let's go ahead, I'm going to load those neutral density ones. Just go ahead and hit OK. It's going to ask me if I want to save the one that we made. No, I don't, I don't really care. Um, okay, so let's go look at these neutral density ones. These are going to be really great if we have a, a photograph in here and we want to create a vignette. And so you can see this is really, really strong, and that's okay um, because um, I have two options. I could change the opacity here, um, but that's actually gonna give me this weird kind of staggered look through my gradients as I apply them. In this case, because they're all on a new layer, I'm gonna go through and just to change the opacity of my particular layer. And this is true of any edits I'm really going to do in Photoshop. I always like to apply them to a new layer really strong and then change the opacity of them later, which is going to give me more control over them. So I can create, you can see, uh, a really customized vignette using the gradient tool that offers really subtle gradations. 
uh, between the dark and the uh, light areas. So creating gradients with your vignettes is another great opportunity to use the vignette tool. Um, and so that's actually uh, more or less that's going to cover everything we're going to look at. So today's demo wasn't nearly as long, but we're going to have a lot of fun in the assignment, I think. And so let's dig into the assignment in the next video. So you can go ahead. Hopefully you found this fun and we'll uh, see you in the next video. Hopefully having even more fun in the, uh, in the assignment for today.